This is Dr. Carroll, and this is another video in the Python Dictionary series. This one's about dictionary methods. And in particular, I'll be talking about four methods, keys, values, items, and get. So let's talk about each of those in turn, in terms of their parameters and what they return. So keys doesn't have, doesn't take any parameters, and but it returns a view object of the keys in in the dictionary D. And we'll see what that means in a minute. Values also doesn't take a parameter and it returns an, a view object of the values in the dictionary. Items doesn't take anything and it returns a key value pairs. It'll return two items each time. Get does take a parameter. It takes a key and it returns the value associated with the key in the dictionary or if it can't find it, it's going to return none. All right, let's see some examples. So if we have our phone book here uh, with some of my friends and we display the phone book and we want to just list the friends, then we could use the keys method on the phone book dictionary. And this will output a, this will display a view object. And so what it'll display is something like this, dictionary underscore keys, in parentheses and it'll pass that list there. That, that's kind of awkward and usually we don't work with the view object and so often we will say okay well I, I want that as a list and so it'll it'll give a list representation of the view object or in other words it will be a list of the keys in the dictionary. Now uh, let's see another dictionary. Let's use the translate dictionary, um, translating English, having English numbers as keys and Portuguese numbers as the values. And so we could iterate through each of these keys here and use it, use that key to look up and access an item in the dictionary, return it, and then display it. And notice here we are using the square brackets to be able to access that item um, in the dictionary. That's just how it works. And so then this will display in Portuguese zero is, is sorry, in Portuguese zero is zero, in Portuguese one is um, in Portuguese two is dois, in Portuguese three is tres. All right, now this is so common that we can just leave off the dot keys and it will take a dictionary and it will just basically call the keys method and it will yield the same result, the exact same output. So now let's look at a the values method uh, example. So if we have the Portuguese numbers and we just, just want to just display all of the Portuguese terms in the dictionary we can say hey give me all your values and it will and then we'll display those each on its own line zero um dois tres now let's look at items sometimes it's like uh, the first time we were displaying the the um, the translations above we were actually using both so um, instead of having that extra line we can just use a four in setup and called translate.items and then this will return not only the key but then we do a comma and then we specify the value as well. And so we can have the exact same output line here but without having to look it up in the dictionary first. So we get the key and the value in that order and it returns a tuple so we use a comma. And so that will display exactly the, the, the same thing. Now let's look at a get uh, examples. So what if we try to use a key that does not exist in the library? For example, one million. So the English number one million, we haven't put it in our dictionary. So when we go to access that, we're gonna get a runtime key error. So if, but if we use the get method and say, hey, I'd like to get um, the value based on the key one million, it returns none. It says, "Hey, I don't, I don't have that." And so, that's very different to return to to generate uh, 
a runtime error versus just returning none. That's a lot easier to deal with. And so then we can, if we displayed it here, say in Portuguese, one million is none, whereas it, it should have said milhão. So now get optionally takes a second argument. And so what it does is the second argument replaces none if the key is not found. And so the exact same setup here, translate.get English num, but if we give a second argument and say, hey, if you can't find that key, just return the string unknown instead. So now if we display it here, it says in Portuguese, one million is unknown. And so that would be an appropriate um, response or not in the dictionary or something like that. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Check out my other videos in the Python Dictionary series.